welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing to you our new dies, window frame and Christmas garland. I love these dies so much because they work great separately and together. And if you remember that window frame die is the perfect die to combine with three of our stamp sets, which is Joy to All, Furry and Bright, and Window Scene Winter. These were all designed to work together. The other cool thing about the window frame die is that you can really use it with any stamp sets in your stash. And we're gonna be showing you that a little bit later on in the video. Here is the window frame die, and you can see how many cool elements are included in it. Of course, there's the window frame and some curtains and some cute little extra things. So first up, we're gonna take a look at the curtains, and you'll see that there's these little pieces, and those are the little tie backs for the curtain. So they're really fun to layer with different pattern papers or different colors of cardstock. Then we also can see how these window curtains are gonna work behind the window frame. And so you can do them behind the frame as if you're looking from the outside into someone's house. And then you can also do them the other way and we'll show you that in a second. Now here's a little valance which you can add or not which I think makes it look so cute and really springy. I think that'd be fun for spring cards. And then when you're looking from the inside out, you can also use the curtains and there's a little curtain rod for that. So we put the curtain rod there and then you can have the curtains on it. So I love that you can have both perspectives with the window. The other thing you can do is you can use the valance with just that in the window. So when you use those together, it gives this really cute like kitchen springy vibe, which will be really fun to use in spring and summer months. Then we also have those cute little stars and moons that are in the set. And so we have some individual stars and moons and then some stars and moon that are on these little strings. And those little string ones are so cute because you can hang them from the window and give kind of this like storybook feel, or you can fill the stars and the moons in the window pane. So that's really fun for nighttime scenes. And once again, kind of like that storybook or even nursery welcome baby kind of feel. Now here is a look at that window scene winter stamp set and we're going to do an entire video dedicated to this stamp set but it's got two elements that are great with this and that's our cute little couch. I mean look how fun we stamped on some brown plaid paper and then here we've got that window scene so you can layer that behind and now we're looking out into that really cute snowy scene and that little sofa just helps set the scene for this whole thing. And then here you can see what the window looks like without the curtain. So just a nice clean window looking out into that beautiful winter scene with those birch trees, which I just adore. And once again, we're gonna be focusing on that stamp set in another upcoming video. This is that Christmas garland die. Now this die was created to work perfectly with the window frame, but it works really great on its own too. And throughout this next week, we're gonna be showing you some of those cool ideas. Here you can see how you can layer some of those different kind of garland swag pieces, which is so pretty. And then we have the extra little pieces that you can add in to kind of create more body to the garland, which is really cute. And they're really fun to use on their own as well. There are two bows in this set. So there's that tiny little bow and then this larger bow. And you'll see it has this piece that sticks out. All you do is wrap it all of the way around and just tack it down with a little bit of liquid glue. And that gives you a really cute kind of three dimensional bow look and you can layer it on top of those bow ends and it's super sweet. And so that's a larger bow that you can put in the center there, which is my favorite look. I think that's just so pretty. And then we have these cute little holly berries. So we have the individual berries and also the cluster and you can just kind of sprinkle those around your garland. And here's Here's a look at you can see how it fits perfectly on that window. So cute and fun. You can use it just on its own like that or you can add the extra garland pieces to add even more of a Christmassy look to your window. Next up, we're gonna create a really adorable Christmas card with this set. And what we're gonna be doing is creating a window where we're gonna be looking out into a night sky. So I'm going ahead and taking out my ruler and just measuring the size of rectangle that I need to do to fit it behind there perfectly. And I'm just gonna trim down my piece of cardstock so that I have the perfect size piece. Then we're gonna work on creating this really cool background. And we are recreating a card by Mindy today. And you guys know Mindy well because she makes such beautiful videos. And I saw this card and oh my gosh, it was so gorgeous. And I asked her if I could recreate it for the intro video. So thank you so much, Mindy. And she used a very unique color combo here, evergreen bow, pine needles, and black soot. And I couldn't believe it. I thought, gosh, this is gonna be green and it's, it's gonna look really weird. And Mindy said, don't worry, just try it. So here you can see, you can almost see me going, I don't know, I don't know. But we're gonna build up that color. Then we're gonna switch to the pine needles and build that up on the outside. And then we're gonna take our black soot and build that up. And when you start blending the colors back and forth, so we'll go from the black to the darker green to the lighter green and kind of back and forth to blend everything, it ends up creating this really beautiful night sky. 
Now to create night skies, I always like to spray some nice clean water onto my background. I let it react with the Distress Ink. And here I'm just gonna pick up any of the excess water with a paper towel and you can see it almost looks like stars way in the background. Then we're gonna take some white acrylic paint here. We're gonna add some water to it and we're gonna create some little snow. So I feel like the water are the stars and the snow is this white paint. And I'm gonna tap that paintbrush and just splatter that white paint all over. Now I went ahead and let this dry for a couple of hours before I did my next stamping. I probably should have stamped before I did the white splatters, but that's okay, I let it dry. I'm gonna put it here in my misty so that I can make sure to double stamp if I need to, although I didn't need to, it ended up being dry enough. And I'm gonna take out a favorite stamp set, that's Ready, Set, Snow. It's an older stamp set that's still one of my favorites. And one of the reasons is it has this adorable Santa silhouette and it's a perfect match for this window. So I am going to ink that up with some archival ink because once again, I'm stamping on a little bit of a wet background. And so that's going to stamp right on top. And we're just going to press down there. And you'll see I only had to stamp once and it looks just perfect in that background. And isn't that so pretty? Such a unique night sky. Now it has kind of a green look, but Mindy mentioned when you put blue with it, it picks out the blues in those green colors. So here we're gonna take some Let It Shine paper. We're gonna die cut that with the largest stitched rectangle and that's got some blue in it and that's gonna really bring out the blue in that sky. We're also gonna die cut some wood grain cardstock with that same stitched rectangle. And I'm just gonna trim that down to about an inch and that's gonna be the floor for the card. So now we've got our wood grain floor and our really cool striped wall paper. To give the window a special look, we're gonna die cut that from some of the white wood grain cardstock. And this is perfect for die cutting this window frame. So we'll run that through the die cut machine. And now we have a white window frame, but it's got that little extra detail of that wood grain embossing on it. And I'm gonna add some tape runner all along the back of this. And I'm gonna create a little snow bank. So that's gonna kind of help set the rest of our scene in this window. So I'm just die cutting a little piece of white cardstock with a simple stitch till side border. And you'll see that that's gonna be a little snow scene. And I'm actually gonna to stick it to the back of the window, that adhesive we just put down, kind of about halfway up that first set of window panes. And then we can trim off any of that excess. And then right here was where I realized I wanted to decorate this window, so I decided not to put the whole Santa scene behind there just yet, and you'll see why in a second. So here we have some green shimmer cardstock and some red sparkle cardstock, and we're gonna die cut that with the Christmas garland. We've got holly, we have a bow, and we have that beautiful Christmas garland with that shimmery shine to it. And I'm gonna add some liquid glue drops just to the tops of those little leaf pieces, because you'll see the rest of it's gonna hang down over the window, so I just need them on the very top. And then we'll add a little piece of glue right into the center of that and we can layer on our sparkly red bow. Then we'll take some sparkly red holly berries and we're gonna add those onto the garland. And I feel like this kind of makes that whole decoration. It just looks so pretty. And so I like to put a little drop of glue down and then I add the berry and I just kind of move it around with this little uh, die pick pokey tool. It's just a little bit easier for me to do that because they are tiny little berries, but look how cute that looks. It's so fun. And then now I can layer it on there. And the reason I waited is I didn't want the garland to cover up my Santa. So now I can look through the window and put it down exactly in the right place Place where the Santa's towards the top of the window, but the garland doesn't completely cover him up. We'll add some tape runner to the back of that, and then we can center that in our card. So now we're inside the house. We've got a wood grain floor, our cool wallpaper, and now that beautiful window where we're looking out to this snowy night scene. Now here we have Joy to All and Furry and Bright, and they are perfect matches to these windows. So I went ahead and stamped, colored, and die cut a bunch of images from those sets. And then here we have the Let It Shine paper, and we're gonna be doing some paper piecing. So you'll see that that tree has a tree skirt, and one of my favorite ways to use that tree skirt is to paper piece it, because it really makes it look like a real tree skirt. So we're gonna stamp it on one of those papers from the new Let It Shine snowflakes. And then I'm going to trim around with my scissors right along that black line. Now for fussy cutting to make it look perfect what I always do is I take a black marker and I go along the outside edge. That way any of my cutting that wasn't exactly right that black marker is going to cover up any of those and it's going to make it look like you cut it out perfectly. So this is definitely a good tip and trick especially if you're not the best fussy cutter like me. <laughs> so we're going to add some tape runner to the back of that and now we can layer it onto the stamp and how cute is that and you can imagine you could do that with any pattern paper that you have. I think a plaid would be really, really cute as that tree skirt. 
Now we're going to set the rest of this scene. So we're going to start decorating our Christmas tree. We'll add the star to the top of the tree, of course. Although I feel like I should put that last. I always do that last when I decorate my tree. But now we're going to add all these cute little ornaments to the tree. And really, you can put them anywhere on the tree. It's going to look really cute. You're going to see I have an empty spot at the bottom. There was an ornament I couldn't find. Um, and then we found it later, so it was okay. <laughs> So we're gonna layer that tree right in the center of that window. Look how pretty that looks. Oh my gosh, I just love this card. And then now we're going to layer the presents into those cute little kids. So they're gonna be each holding those presents. And I love how big the presents are in comparison to the kids. I just think that's really sweet. We're gonna add some foam squares to the back of those kids and then just tape runner to the dog because he's gonna be kind of in the background looking out the window up at Santa, which I think is really adorable. And then we can go ahead and take those kids and we're gonna layer them around the Christmas tree. Then we finally found that lost ornament. So we were able to add that last ornament to the tree, which kind of fills in that little gap on the bottom left. And then we're gonna be doing some details with a white gel pen. So I really loved what Mindy did here. She added some little stars into the sky, which made it just feel really, really special. And then she added some detailing on the tree with little white dots and also those little stars as well. And I thought that was really pretty and it kind of added some extra sparkle and fun to the tree, almost like one of those flock trees that have the little snow on it already. It's always fun to shop your stash to find the perfect sentiment and there was a Merry Christmas in the Holiday Helper stamp set that was the perfect small size for this little seed so that the sentiment would be right in between those kids. So we're going to go ahead and prep that paper with an anti-static powder tool. We're going to stamp in some clear embossing ink, add some white heat embossing powder, and then we're going to heat that up with the heat tool and we're going to have a bright white shiny sentiment on that beautiful red cardstock. We're going to die cut that with a sentiment banner die and now you'll see it's the perfect little sentiment for this scene. So we're gonna layer that right in between the kids and it's gonna look so cute. And the last step is to add this whole card panel to a standard size card base, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. And we're just gonna add that with some tape runner. And then our card is all done. This card is so sweet. There's something about adding that window to these Christmas scenes that just makes it feel like quintessentially Christmas. I just adore it. And the little puppy dog in the background, I mean, oh my goodness, it's so much fun. Thank you so much again, Mindy. And of course, Mindy will have a bunch of upcoming videos for you guys too. And next up, Shari is going to knock your socks off with this gorgeous card. And she's gonna be taking this idea with the window frame and the tree and she's gonna turn it around. So we're gonna be on the outside looking in on the Christmas tree. And then she's gonna create an even cooler idea using this window for a fall card. So the window doesn't just have to be for Christmas. So take it away, Shari. I wanted to create a fun window card with the window frame die that has a cutout on the front that you look inside the house. So I'm starting out with some white wood grain cardstock and I've cut that using the Simple Stripes Portrait die. So you can see I have all these pieces of wood grain cardstock. I'm using a piece of low tack tape to pick those up as one piece. And this is gonna look like the siding on our house. I've used the window frame die to cut out a window frame from some storm cloud cardstock. And then I'm going to cut out the opening in the card base using the rectangle die that goes with the window scene winter stamp set. Because this die is slightly bigger than the opening of this window because they are designed to work together. This is going to perfectly cut out the window that I need in my card base. So I'm just using it kind of layered behind the window die cut piece to figure out where I want my window. And then I'll just hold this in place with a little bit of low tack tape. And then you want to make sure that you open up your card before you send this through your die cut machine. So I'm gonna open that up and then I'll send this through and it will cut an opening just on the front of my card. Now I'm adding some adhesive all around that opening. I'm making sure that I get it everywhere because all these pieces that I'm gonna put on the front are cut apart so it's not one big piece. So you wanna make sure you get adhesive to where all of these are gonna get stuck down. And that tape helps me lay it all down as one piece lined up. And now I need to cut that same window out of that lap siding that I've created. So I'm cutting this from the back side, and I'm just using my craft knife and a straight edge to cut out that same window using the opening that I cut with the die as a guide. 
So I apologize you keep seeing my head, but I'm just making sure I have it lined up with the edge of that die cut opening. And no worries if this isn't completely perfect because of course this is going to get covered up with that die cut window frame. So I'll just go ahead and add that window frame to the outside. You only need to put that adhesive around the outside edges right now because the inside part, the mullions, are not going to be touching anything. But of course, I want it to look nice and finished on the inside, so I've cut a second frame out. And this is where you can add a little bit of glue to those mullions in the middle. And then you can line these up, and they'll be glued to each other. And you get this nice finished frame on the inside as well. So that liquid glue really helps you kind of shift it around and get it lined up just perfectly. So now we have this window that we can see to the inside. I wanna keep decorating the outside right now with a little bit of snow. So I have a piece of pixie dust glitter cardstock and I'm using one of the stitched hillsides to cut a little snow bank that's going to layer underneath. So I've just put some liquid glue and I'll just line that up with the bottom. You could cut this with a stitch rectangle as well if you wanted that stitching detail. And then I'm using the Christmas garland die and I'm going to decorate the outside of my window. So I've cut some of these garlands from some cilantro cardstock. And I'm using this one that has the two swoops for the top. And then of course these longer ones will fit on the sides. So I'm putting this one on first because those side ones, I'm going to tuck the ends up underneath this one that's on top. And you can see that it comes with pieces that curve in opposite directions. So you get this nice balanced look when you put one on each side of the window. And I've just put most of my glue on one side of that garland because the other side is hanging off that window frame. So again, for the other side, I'll just tuck that underneath. And I'm just lining them up to make sure they look pretty even on the left and the right. And then there's also a bow in this die set. There are two bows actually. This one is the one that has two pieces and it has this little tail that you can wrap around the bow and kind of give it this three dimensional look. So I'm just folding that around to where it wraps around the center and I'll just put a dot of glue to hold this in place. Now what I like to do with bows like this is I take my blocking tweezers and I'll just have the hold that piece in place while that glue dries. And then this is going to go on this little piece that are the tails. So just another little dot of glue on those tails and then I can put the top part of the bow right on top. And then this is going to go in the center of my garland to finish off that decorating of the outside of the window. There's also some little berries in this set. There's single berries or these little clusters and I thought these little clusters would look really nice to kind of bring in a little bit more of the red. So I cut six of those and I'm just placing three on each side. And I'm moving this one over because I thought that it was a little off balance. I wanted it to match the one on the other side. Now for the inside of my card, I thought it would be nice to have a die cut Christmas tree. So I'm using the Jolly Christmas Tree 
die. I'm putting a piece of that double sided adhesive sheet on a piece of black cardstock. That's what I've cut that solid base out of. And then for the outline, I'm going to cut that out of black. And I'll just layer that on top of this piece that has all the adhesive. So I can peel that liner paper off. And the way I like to stick this down, you can put it down just like you see me starting to do. But the way I like to do it is I like to flip the outline die cut over so we're looking at the back side and then lay the solid piece on top. I feel like it's just easier for me to line it up this way because that outline isn't moving around too much. And then when I flip it back over, all those openings are full of adhesive and I can take my other die cut. So I've cut the tree out of some Noble Fir cardstock for the green parts of the tree. And I'll just pop those out and then drop them into the outline that I've already put onto that base. The same goes for the decorations. I'm using some gold glitter cardstock for the star and some of the ornaments on the tree. You can also line it up like I'm doing here and pop out those little pieces and they go pretty much in their right place, but you can still adjust them a little bit. And then for the other ornaments, I'm using some red cardstock. So this will match the bow and the berries that I have on the outside of the card. And then of course for that trunk down there I've just got a little piece of a paper bag cardstock I'll pop in there and then my tree is all finished and this is going to look really great peeping through my window. But before I glue that down, I want to make some wallpaper to go on the wall. So I'm using the Let It Snow Snowflakes paper pack. I like this gray one here. It's very light. It's not going to compete with my beautiful tree. And I've just cut a piece that's going to cover the whole inside of the card. I need to add a little bit of floor for my tree to sit on, so I'm using that dark brown wood grain cardstock, just a little strip of it. I'm just going to trim off the excess here. And then I have a wood floor for my tree to sit on. And you can see there, I also have curtains that I've cut out of some felt, which is a really fun effect. That was Kelly's idea to try, and I really liked the look of it once I cut those out of the felt. So I'll be putting those on the inside of my window. Right now I'm putting my tree down with some liquid glue, and then i am just closed it so I can make sure that it's perfectly lined up with the center of my window. And now to hang the curtains. I really thought this was a really fun look with these felt curtains. You kind of get that fabric look. I'm just putting these on with my glue tube, my liquid glue. You can see I've put some glue on the top and the bottom and then all along the side and then I can just line the curtains up with that window frame. And again this is on the inside of the card so when I close the card you can see those curtains peeking through. Now I'm making a little pencil mark just so I know where that window kind of stops so that I can stamp my sentiment above it. And so you don't see the sentiment through the window, you only see the sentiment when you open the card. I'm stamping that season's greeting sentiment in some black licorice ink and I'll just erase my little pencil mark. And then here is my finished card and I just think this turned out so beautiful and elegant. I love those felt curtains. And I love the look of this completely die cut card. So I'm going to make a fall themed window frame card. So I've cut my window frame from some narwhal cardstock and my little curtain rod here from some black licorice cardstock. And then for the curtains, I am using some sweater weather paper. I'm using my very favorite sweater weather paper, which is that one that looks like a quilt and it made the cutest curtains I have ever seen. <laughs> so you just want to make sure that you line up the die with that grid and look at how cute these curtains turned out. 
I'm also using that red pattern paper from Sweater Weather for the little tie backs for the curtains. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those to each of these. And I picked this color because it matches the red in the curtains perfectly. So I'm adding that curtain rod and I'm just going to line it up right underneath that line that the die cuts. And I'm adding this first so I can use it as a go by to put my curtains on. And then I'll add each of these curtains so that the little ball at the end of the curtain rod is right at the edge of the curtain. So you're going to see the edge of the curtain rod and you're also going to see the frame on each side. So this particular card is as if we're inside looking towards the outside. I'm using this blue spiffy speckles. That's going to be my sky outside. I've just cut that down to where it fits behind the frame. You could also use the die in the window scene winter set. It cuts out the square that will fit back there perfect. And then I cut a piece of paper bag cardstock that same size. And I'm going to make some trees that we're going to see through the window. So I'm lining up the square behind the window and then I'm just adjusting it to where I can get the most out of my stitch tree border that I'm going to use. So if I cut it right here, I'm going to get three trees. And I'm just double checking that they're kind of lined up where I want them to be with the window. And then I'll just run this through my die cut machine and I'll get the tree bases. Then for the grass, I'm going to use another piece of sweater weather paper. And this is sort of just guessing to get the right curve. This is one of the stitch till sides that matches the curve of these tree of the tree borders. And I'm just getting it mostly right. It may not line up perfectly on the edges, but the curve is going to line up. And that doesn't matter because it's going to be hidden behind the window frame anyway. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'll just line that up with the top edge of the stitch tree border and then I have some grass with my brown trees sticking out above that. Now that stitch tree border die has some kind of funky circles that you cut out to make the leaves of the trees and that's what I'll do next. So you can see how this is sort of looking here. They're a little bare but we want to make them colorful because this is a fall card. So I've got out those two circle type shapes and then I thought it would be good to use the watercolor wishes rainbow because you can pull out this orange piece and depending on where you cut it you'll get different colors of the tree leaves. So if I cut it one at the top I'll get a darker color, one towards the bottom I'm going to get a lighter orange. So I cut all three of these from different places on that same piece of paper. And then now that I have all of those put together, I can just add that to the background and then add this behind my window. So you can see those ones on the side, you're not going to see the whole tree, but you do just get a little peek of that tree behind the curtains. I'm using a big piece of sweater weather paper, that yellow with the polka dots. This is going to be my wallpaper on the wall around my window so I'll just add that to a card base and you can see how this is starting to turn out and then I've cut and colored a little cat from Perfectly Wicked a little orange cat and then I also cut one of the little furry and bright dogs so I colored another little black and tan puppy and these guys are going to be looking out the window but before I glue everything down, I want to give them a little floor to stand on. So I just have a strip of the brown wood grain cardstock. I'm just going to glue that across the bottom and trim off the edge. So this is the floor for them to stand on. I just didn't want my puppy to be floating in the air. And then I'm also going to go ahead and put the sentiment together. So I'm using thanks. And I'm stamping that in some clear embossing ink and I'm going to white emboss that and then I'll use the coordinating die to cut this out. This is on some Blue Jay cardstock. 
So I'm just heating that up with my heat tool till it gets nice and white and melted. And then the coordinating die will cut this out nicely so you'll get that white sentiment with that darker blue around it. This is going to layer up onto the window. And then the rest of the sentiment is going to be for being you. So it says thanks for being you and I'm just stamping this. This will be below the window. So now that I've got that placed, I can add my window right above it. Then I'll add my little cat. I like that this one is small enough and it looks great sitting on the windowsill here. And I like that he looks like he's pointing outside, like telling the dog to look at something out there. And of course this little dog, he can stand on the floor and up on the windowsill. I know my dachshund used to do this <laughs> to try and look out the window. I would put a chair by the window. She would sit on it and look out the window. Just so cute. And then the scripty thanks, I'll just add some liquid glue and I'm going to layer this up on the top left side over the curtain. And I'll just lay a block on it. It's being glued over a whole bunch of layers so that holds it in place while it dries. And then here is that finished fall card. Thank you so much for these gorgeous cards, Shari. This fall one is so pretty. I love the curtain so much and the kitty and the puppy together, so sweet. And then this card is absolutely stunning and so elegant, like you said. Those felt curtains are so cool and I love when you open the window, you see on the inside of the card the whole scene. So fun and so cool. And next up, we have some stunning cards by the design team and this one by Yanea. Oh my goodness. Look at that couch that she stamped on our sweater weather paper and she made it look old and weathered with some cool inking in that beautiful night sky so gorgeous this card by grace oh my goodness so it's really cool the window fits on slimline cards which is awesome and look at the little bears on the couch is that not just the cutest thing you've ever seen i just adore it the vellum on the window is really awesome too this card by Letitia is clean and simple perfection. I love those awesome curtains and the little kitty in the window. How sweet and beautiful is this? I can't wait to make one just like it. This card by Lynette is so sweet. You've got the little puppy sleeping on the couch and those beautiful foiled curtains. And as you open up the card, you get to see in the whole scene with there's little dogs outside. I think that's so fun that you see a little bit of the scene and then you open up to the big one. So cool and so cute. This card by Tammy is so beautiful and we recreated this in the Joy to All and Furry and Bright video. So check that out if you haven't seen it yet. And then here, how fun is this by Mindy? I love the little Yeti on the outside and the Merry Mice on the inside. So cute and so fun. I love this card by Audrey. It's so beautiful. I love the inking she did and the stenciling on that outside scene just gorgeous and then this card by elena look how sweet that is oh i just love it with the couch and the little boy and the puppies adorable and fun so we cannot wait to see what you guys create with these two new die sets so make sure to share it with us thank you so much for watching today and i hope you have an absolutely amazing day bye